So it's been a really big, I guess, six days. We're into day six um, and, and we've transitioned, I think, really successfully um, and we're starting to find our new normal, if you like. Um, Teachers are pretty exhausted. They've worked really, really hard over the holidays, preparing and planning and collaborating. Um, and it's it's a real, really big change for them, spending a lot of time in front of their screens. And I know that a lot of people um, are, are sort of struggling with that. We're missing the students, of course. Um, it's an empty school here without our students, and we're really looking forward to the time when we'll have them back. But um, by all accounts, our students seem to have successfully transitioned and um, the survey that we set last Friday tells us that they're really engaged and stimulated with what the teachers are putting up. Um, so this is, as I said before, this is our sixth day of classes um, and, and I wanted to really start by acknowledging the efforts of our staff and our teachers. As I said before, they're, they're working really hard. Many are starting to learn new platforms that we haven't had to learn before, so Microsoft Teams. Um, Compass is our primary platform for delivering our curriculum and that's the first place that we want students to go to access their learning. And from there, teachers will then say whether they've got a live um, lesson or whether or not they're collaborating on OneNote or whatever platform they'll be directed to. But it's really important that students go to Compass first. On, um, on Compass, on that, on that lesson, they'll have their lesson, learning intentions and their success criteria, and then they'll have the detail about what that learning will look like for that day. Um, resources will be put there, or there will be a way for, for students to navigate where they need to be. Um, we're really enjoying using Microsoft Teams. As I said before, that's a new platform for us and, and I really commend the teachers for getting on board and, and sharing different ways for using that platform and it's been really successful. Um, we've really enjoyed touching base and connecting with our students live and our students again have been telling us that's one of the, the things that they've really enjoyed about remote learning. It's really important to, part of really good on um, home learning pedagogy is that students have that chance to connect with their teachers and with each other. So we're, we're still looking at different ways that we can start checking for learning a little bit more. Um, at, at the moment, um, teachers are finding that a, a bit of a struggle in terms of um, keeping up with that workload and setting learning tasks and so on, and getting back to students and teachers, I mean students and parents. So we ask parents to be really patient with with us in that regard and, and we will get better and we will get more efficient with, with how we do that. But again, it's a, it's a big workload at the moment for, for teachers to be able to, um, to, to not only learn different ways of teaching, but to also check for that understanding and make sure that they're giving feedback in a, in a, time that's, uh, in a timely manner. Um, we're really encouraged too by students and how resilient they've been and how they've really embraced this new way of learning. Obviously, there's going to be issues um, around how how they engage with each other, and you know, because they're going to be pushing boundaries a little bit. So we ask parents to really help us out in that regard and and support us um, in in hope in ensuring that their students are engaged as well. Uh, are there any questions that anyone would like to ask so far as we continue? Okay, so we might um, keep going. Um, so with reports and assessment this term, it will look a little bit different. Yesterday, we made it really clear to our staff that we, we, we could start scaling back CAIs as such, because CAIs um, are going to look a little bit different for some of our learning areas, obviously for our practical subjects, particularly PE for arts and technology. It's, it's really difficult to be able to assess in the same way that we have been in the past. So our learning area leaders and our um, teachers are looking at different ways that we can assess our students and, and deliver the curriculum in that way. So we're still unsure at this point in time what reports are gonna look like at the end of um, this semester. And we, we know though that they will look a little bit differently. Parents will, can still expect a Victorian curriculum level. Um, However, we won't be probably having as many CAIs, so the three CAIs per subject that we've had in the past. We will, however, be having more smaller learning tasks that are updated um, regularly. Is there any other questions that people have about assessments? 
as, as a common um, so yeah Catherine's just clarifying what a CAI is um, so um, so that brings us to our whole school programs that we've so suggested um, student schedules um, at 2.30 when our day finish, uh, two o'clock when our day finishes. Um, we've got a half an hour session in there where students can engage with whole school programs. It's optional um, and it's really to give students a chance to be creative, do different things, become active, do things with their family, etc. And we've got some programs there that hopefully will engage our students and, and get them up and moving. We're really mindful of how long students are spending behind a screen and um, that's a little bit concerning. It's difficult for our um, teachers and so we, we know that that's difficult for our students as well. So our whole school programs we launched last week and that was our Literacy for Learning booklet. So they're strategies, teaching our students strategies from year 7 to 12 that our teachers have been um, delivering in their classes for the past year and we just wanted to refresh our students with those strategies. So nominalisation, how to extend their noun groups um, and how to use the register continuum and make appropriate language choices um, for audience and purpose. So that booklet's there ready to go and we published that last week um, and we really encourage you to work through that booklet you could um, and, and you're welcome to email it to me if you wanted to or if you had further questions you're welcome to ask the school. Um, the second program that we had last week was the 30 minute activity guide that our learning area leader of PE has put together and there's some QR codes in there that you can access which has some really good activities to get kids active um, and we really encourage our kids to our students to do those with their families as well. That would be a really fun way of getting active. Um, yesterday we launched the Premier's Reading Challenge. So we are hoping that students will um, pick up books and read them. Our library is open. So our librarians have been working really hard to get the library um, ready to be able to start processing books. So if you're wanting some books, you just email the library and you can order whatever books you like and we've got a pop-up library table in the staff room and you can come up to the school and collect all the books you've, you've um, processed. We're at that stage of still getting our login codes out to students but students can start the challenge now, record in hard copy and then they'll be able to upload it when the student logins come in the next couple of days. The principal team are right behind the Premier's Reading Challenge. We want our students reading and for every book that every one of our students reads, one of the print team will clank for 10 seconds and acknowledge what that book is and the student who read it. So I guess we're going to get fit hopefully. Maybe we'll end up with six packs, all five of us. Um, we'll see, that, but maybe that can be our challenge. But we really, really want to um, encourage our students to read and we, we think this is a perfect opportunity for, for students to do that. Um, the Premier's Reading Challenge is a great way of acknowledging what our students are reading, keeping count, etc., and and motivating our students to do so. Our English team are behind it too, so part of the Year 7 to 9 Independent Reading Program is about supporting our students in the, in the reading challenge um, and that's what will be embedded in their lesson plans. So yeah, when those logins come, make sure that you log in and get part of it as well and get your principals planking. So during our Facebook live sessions, you will see one of us planking and acknowledging the students and the books that they're reading. Um, we've also got a few other programs. Yesterday we also launched our, uh, our weekly writing competition. So each week we'll have a different um, prompt or a stimulus or a first line and we're asking our students to have a go at writing, um, finishing off the story and uploading their entries to me. So wac at wantonacollege.vic.edu.au. Each, each week we'll um, publish the winning entries in the newsletter and there'll be prizes to be won and there'll be house points. There will be also the reading challenge as well. I should have said that before. Um, we've also got a Spanish uh, MasterChef coming in another week or two. So MasterChef Challenge, I should say, not an actual MasterChef coming to the school, but a MasterChef Challenge. 
So we want our students in the kitchens cooking and making a, a, a special meal and taking photos and uploading those as well. So that's, that process is going to be launched next week. Um, so stay tuned for that one. And we've also got a performing arts challenge as well. Our bigger um, challenge as well that Mr Kruger is overseeing is our short film festival. So that will go for the whole term. We launched that yesterday as well. So there's more information on campus that you can access. And Mr Kruger's put together a really detailed guide to how to put together a short film with some great resources. So we encourage students to get active, get creative, get behind a camera and get film and perhaps you know, brothers, sisters, mums, dads can take part in that and become the actors perhaps in those short films. Um, the films will be due in the last two weeks of this term and we're going to have a bit of a festival where we showcase those films um, and have our red carpet moment for Juan Turner College. Um, we've also got a performing arts challenge that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks too around nursery rhymes and, um, and that will sound that's pretty fun as well. Are there any questions that we have about our whole school programs? They are accessible for students on school documentation, so the students can find that there. And it's under whole school programs um, and there's lots of detail there. Or you can email us and we can get back to you with um, specific information. Just looking through questions. Any questions coming through? So. Um, so again, I just wanted to reiterate how how positively I think students and staff have really embraced our transition to remote learning. Question. Oh, there's a question. Uh, I think I have to scroll down. He told me I need to scroll down, and I didn't do it. Okay, so um, yep, Kate. Louis is going to be planking, absolutely. Maybe we'll make him be the first planker if we all vote him. We can't say no. Um, Georgia, if we're making short films in media, can we submit those? Um, yeah, possibly. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it depends, I guess. Our short short, film short, so they're about three minutes. So I guess if it falls into that category. Um, and we've got another message about Kruger planking yet. Yeah. The whole print team is going to be planking, so um, <laughs> at different times. Um, yeah, so finally, just for me, business, I just wanted to reiterate and really thank our um, whole school community, I guess, in this transition to remote learning. Um, we've had some really positive feedback from our staff on, their, on the staff survey that we issued last Friday, um, and a real take up on these different platforms in delivering. Um, remote learning. We've had some really positive feedback from our students as well who are telling us that they're engaged, that they're stimulated, they like and appreciate the work that the, the staff are doing. Um, and just to reiterate, with, with reports and with assessment, we are going back on size and shorter, time, more formative assessment um, and smaller learning tasks as well. Um, we are going to have reports that are going to be a little bit different this, this semester and we will keep you up to date with what that looks like when we've made those decisions. Um, and we will be having an interim report halfway through the term where students will get to self-assess their learning behaviours and we'll also have our um, staff assessing those learning behaviours too. So hopefully that will be some more feedback to parents as to how we're going and, and we'll have that data um, in the same way that it was presented last term so that you can compare what the students are saying and what our teachers are saying. Um, but apart from that, I'd just like to say thank you again. Thank you to our wonderful teachers for all the great work that they're doing. Thank you to our students for um, getting on board as well and being so resilient and transitioning um, to this new normal. And if you have any issues or concerns, please contact the school and we're here to help. Thank you.